Hey guys, it's Cruise Tips with Christina, and today I have my top 30 tips for you cruise travelers. So whether you are brand new to cruising with Holland America Cruise Line, or you've cruised with them maybe once or twice, but want some tips, here are my top 30 tips that you should know if you are cruising with Holland America for the first time. Okay, so tip number one is don't worry. So I'm in this Facebook group and I've noticed a lot of newbie travelers to Holland America. They're, they're scared. I mean, who wouldn't be if you've never been on a cruise, but big picture is Holland America cruise line will take care of you. You will have a great vacation. If you forget to pack something, no worries. They'll have it on their onboard ship and their shops probably. Um, if you don't plan anything ahead of time, no worries. That's the great thing about going on a cruise is that you don't have to plan anything. You can just show up on the ship and have a great time. This is honestly what my mom and I do. We don't plan excursions most of the time. Sometimes we don't even know where we're going. We're like, we're going to the Caribbean, don't know which islands, packed a swimsuit and sunblock, and we're gonna have a good time. So that's my first tip is don't worry. The great thing about cruising with Holland America is they'll take care of you. Um, if you forget something, no big deal, it will be good. Okay, so my second tip is ask for your fridge and your stateroom to be emptied. So all of the staterooms have a little, maybe it's like this big here, let's go back. Um, they do have a mini fridge and in the fridge they do have little bottles of alcohol, drinks, snacks, etc. Um, my mom and I always ask for our fridge to be emptied. That way we can actually fit snacks and food in it. I personally get hungry at night, so I always grab a snack from the Lido, which is their buffet, and put it in the fridge for a midnight snack. So I would ask for the fridge to be emptied. Um, just when I first get into the stateroom, put on a piece of paper like, please empty fridge, and your stateroom attendant will do that for you. Also, that way you're not accidentally charged for something and you won't be tempted. Um, quick note, if you do buy the drink package on Holland America Cruise Line, the drinks in the mini, fr mini fridge are not included, so they do cost extra. So just ask for your fridge to be emptied. Okay, tip number three. This is kind of like an optional tip, but I would buy the magnetic hooks on Amazon. Get the ones that hold like 30 pounds and I'll include a link below. Um, they're not very expensive and they're very, very helpful. You can put them on the door in your stateroom to like hang up a hat or a scarf or a coat. They do always have um, hooks in my experience in the rooms for like hanging up your hats but having an extra hook or two or three is very helpful. Or you could, um, if, because it's magnetic, put like the daily guide behind the hook and have it on the wall. I also really like to decorate my stateroom door. So on the outside of our door, my mom and I usually go to like Dollar Tree and get some ribbons or a cute little sign. And then you could put it on the hook on your door. It's fun um, and it makes it easier to find your stateroom as well because you have a cute little decoration on it. So optional, but I would get the magnetic hooks. Um, tip number four is pack a water bottle. So some people are confused like, can I bring a water bottle on board? Can I refill it? The answer is yes, absolutely. So I always pack a, it's like a 32 ounce water bottle and you can fill it up in the Lido buffet. Just make sure do not fill it up like directly from the water spout that can cause contamination. Instead, they always have water pitchers out um, by the Lido buffet. So grab a water pitcher or ask one of the um, Holland America crew to pour it into your water bottle for you. In my experience, the water always tastes really good on Holland America Cruise Line. Like, I think it tastes better than my filtered water at home. So the water tastes very, very good. Just bring a water bottle with you that you can refill. That way you don't have to buy bottles of water, 
Um, I think it's better for the environment anyway. So pack a water bottle with you. It's great when you are going to port somewhere as well, just to always have water with you, especially if you're going somewhere hot. Okay, tip number five is regarding onboard credits. So a lot of people ask um, in these Facebook groups, I've noticed like, hey, can I use my onboard credit for something like the spa? I wanna book it ahead of time. Can I do that? The answer is no. Like, unfortunately, onboard credit, you can only spend when you are physically on the cruise ship. So um, I think there's like one really weird way to go around it that sounds like a pain in the butt. So I would just plan on spending your onboard credit when you are on the ship. Now, how would you spend your onboard credit if you happen to get it? So my number one recommendation would be towards the daily crew tip. So right now it's around $17 per person per day. Now you can adjust that up or down. If you go to the um, customer service desk on the cruise ship, you can elect to give them more or less. I always leave it at $17 per day. So if you have onboard credit, um, that's a really quick and easy way to eat that money up for you and whoever you are cruising with. Now let's say you have more onboard credit to spend. There are plenty of ways to spend it on board. Um, there are drinks, there's drink packages, there's excursions. Um, when my mom and I got a lot of onboard credit because we were delayed in leaving the cruise port, we went to their gift shops and had a lot of fun buying expensive polarized sunglasses and facial products and makeup because it's tax free. So. Just know that if you have onboard credit, you can't use it ahead of time. You have to spend it when you board the ship. Um, another note is that some services are cheaper ahead of time. So like one time my mom wanted to get the hydrotherapy pool. We always recommend you do that. People love it. Um, but it was actually a lot cheaper online ahead of time than once you were on board the ship. So um, be aware of that. Sometimes prices might be cheaper before you actually get on the ship, but I would say use your onboard credit for the crew daily tip, maybe some drinks like coffee, and then excursions if you wanna do that, or treat yourself to something in the gift shop. Okay, my sixth tip for you cruise people, if you're new to cruising with Holland America, or really these cruise tips work for any cruise line, is pack Ziploc bags and or a Tupperware container. So for me personally, I get hungry frequently. I like having a snack. So I love to have Ziploc bags and then in the Lido buffet for breakfast by like the oatmeal section, they usually have walnuts and almonds and hazelnuts. So I love to grab those and put them in my little Ziploc bag. And that way I have a snack for later on that day. Or if my mom and I are like going to the beach it's a lightweight snack to throw into my beach bag that I can have. I also like to pack a Tupperware container. Um, I get hungry at night, so I might put like eggs or vegetables or I don't know, salmon from dinner in the Lido buffet in the Tupperware container and put it in my fridge, which I emptied as a midnight snack. This is just me. I get hungry at night, but I find having Ziploc bags and a Tupperware container very, very helpful. Okay, tip number seven is packing a USB cord, charger, power strip. Um, basically, in my opinion, you don't need to pack one. I know a lot of cruise guides out there talk about packing a USB charging cord. Um, if you are going to do that, make sure it is not a, um, a what's it called? Not does not have a surge protector. If it does, they will confiscate it. But I don't think you really need it unless you have like three or four devices to charge. So your room will have normal charging outlets for like 
your, um, your laptop or your cell phone, and they'll have USB outlets as well. So they do have chargers in the room, no need to pack a power strip. Even if you have a um, CPAP machine, if you um, let them know ahead of time, they will bring the power strip for you and they'll probably run a really, really long extension cord across the room to wherever the power outlet is. Some of the ships, it's next to the bed and some of them, it's like further away, but Holland America will take care of you. I have another video about um, if you are traveling with a CPAP machine, what to do. So check it out. I'll include a link below. It includes things like getting distilled water on the ship. Okay, um, tip number eight, and by the way, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe below and leave me a comment, is download the Navigator app ahead of time. So I personally hate having to download another app. Um, I really like that Holland America does give you a daily printed out guide, like a physical piece of paper, you know, that shows you all of the itinerary and things to do that day. But you will need to download the Navigator app now in order to board the ship. You can no longer print your boarding pass. You have to show it on their app. Um, it does include things like the menu in the dining room on the app. It includes the di daily itinerary. And then if you book an excursion, they will make you have the Navigator app to buy your tickets for the excursion and show that you have purchased the excursion. So download the Navigator app ahead of time. It's the Holland America app. Um, sometimes it's a little tricky to use, but download it ahead of time. Tip number nine is pack something orange. So Holland America has an orange party where you dress up and people are gonna hate me because I'm not gonna know the history, um, but it's basically Dutch heritage. They wear orange and they have a big party on the ship. Um, it's usually one of the sea days and it's on the latter half of the cruise where you just wear something orange. It's fun. You can wear something tacky. It doesn't have to be fancy. So I usually bring like an orange scarf or an orange headband or an orange t-shirt. Um, they will sell orange party things on Holland America Cruise Line, but really people, and it's like tacky kind of things, like a bright necklace or a little headpiece or bright earrings. Like it's not fancy, it's just a lot of fun. It's a themed party. You know, they have white parties where you wear white. This is an orange party where you wear orange. Um, they're lots of fun. I always enjoy them. And so pack something orange, bright orange for you to wear to their orange party. Okay, tips number 10 is pack something dressy for dinner. Now, you don't have to pack something formal for dinner anymore. Holland America no longer has gala night, so you don't have to worry about packing like a tux or a suit or a cocktail dress and fancy heels. Um, but I would pack something dressy. I have another video, which I'll include a link to below on exactly what to wear to dressy night. And I include pictures of what passengers have worn to give you an idea. But basically I just wear, um, usually like a nice maxi dress and fancier sandals. My mom usually wears slacks and like a tank top, but it's like a simple black tank top with a fancy blouse and jewelry. Um, men usually wear khaki pants or slacks and a polo shirt or a buttoned up collared shirt, which is what I recommend. So um, think of it as what you might wear to church or what you might wear to dinner um, at a restaurant, what you might wear to a company event. I don't know. So it's dressy, but you don't need to like go all out. Of course, if you want to go all out and be really fancy and wear gala attire, I would say go for it. Um, just know that you don't have to do that. On Holland America Cruise Line compared to some other cruise lines, I feel like people tend to be a little bit more casual maybe. Um, it does tend to be a slightly older crowd and I, my theory is they're like, we're retired, we don't want to dress up and pack heavy clothes in our suitcase. So pack something dressy, but doesn't have to be super duper fancy. Okay, tip number 11, 10, 11, 
is more like a question. So what is my room card? How do I get into the room? Um, so this is just so that you know ahead of time is that it's like a little key card. I should have grabbed it before doing this video, but it's just like a little credit card size card. It will be outside your stateroom when you get on the ship. Um, it has your name. It's a small card. I always, people ask like, do I need a lanyard ahead of time? Do I need something special to carry it in? No, you don't. I personally don't have a lanyard. I just stick my key card in my pocket or I have a small purse and I put it in my purse. Um, you could stick it in your bra. I don't know, put it in your shoe. Um, so no need to buy anything special, but if you want to go ahead and buy a lanyard, it can be fun. And I'll include a link below of like my favorite cute cruise themed lanyard to put your key card in. Okay, tip number 12 is dinner reservations. So my mom and I personally never go to the specialty restaurants on Holland America Cruise Line. We like the main dining room, we love the service, we love looking out at the ocean. But if you want a specialty restaurant reservation, my recommendation for you is book it right away. So book it before you get on the cruise ship or book it right when you get on board. You just go to, I think it's like deck two, it's outside um, one of their specialty restaurants. Sorry, I don't remember the name of it. Um, maybe it's Rudy's Del, Rudy's Salomar might be where they are. Um, but go and make those specialty restaurant reservations ahead of time because they might book up. So if it's like a late day at port and the cruise ship isn't leaving until 6 p.m., you might not want to have a specialty reservation, restaurant reservation that day. Or it might just book up and then your choices are like 9 p.m. or 5 p.m., which you might not want. So if you do want to eat at a specialty restaurant, just make sure you book it early on so that you can get the day and the time that you want it. I will say most people absolutely love the specialty restaurants on Holland America Cruise Line, um, especially the, why am I drawing a blank? Um, their steak restaurant one. People really, really like it, but um, not needed. But if you do want to do that, make sure you book it ahead of time. Okay, tip number 13. Um, I also have a video on this. As far as should I get assigned seating or open seating? Do I need reservations to eat in the main dining room? How does that work? So on Holland America Cruise Line, they have two floors for their main dining room. Um, deck two, I believe, is open seating, which means you're hungry, show up between like 5.30 and 8. You tell them you want a table and they seat you. And then deck three is assigned seating. So you'll have a time, usually it's like 5.30 p.m. or 8 p.m. And you have the same table every night. If you're eating with other people, it's with the same people every night. And you have the same waiter every single night. So I personally really like having assigned seating. I like having the table that I love by the back window. I love having a waiter who knows my food preferences, um, loves, knows that I want to get salmon every night with extra vegetables. Like it's just faster service. Um, and my mom and I really like having dinner partners every night and we get to like know them over the cruise. So that's my recommendation is get assigned dining times. And if for some reason you don't get it before you get on the cruise ship, no worries. My mom and I always request it and we almost never get it. Same thing, you go to the dining room, you tell them you want an assigned table and they always get us a table. Or um, you could do open seating. Now reviews on this are mixed. Some people say, oh, I never have to wait for a table. Other people say it's horrible. It took like, there's sometimes a line outside the dining room because they have to figure out where to seat people. So you might wait five to 10 minutes for them to actually like get you a table. And then when you sit, the service might be a little bit slower just because people are showing up at random times. It's harder for the waiters to like time everything perfectly. 
Um, you might sit and then wait five minutes for more people to join your table if you're sitting with other people. So um, a lot of people love it because you can just show up and eat whenever you wanna eat, but service might be a little bit slower and not quite as good. Um, other options are, there's always the Lido Buffet, which is really, really great for dinner. And then some people, if you pay extra for, I always get the name wrong, whether it's Club Orange or Orange Club, but if you pay extra for that, they do have their own dining room area or their separate dining room, depending on which ship you're on, where you get your own area to sit and your own waiters, and you don't even have to worry about assigned dining or open dining. That's only if you pay extra for Club Orange, which I personally never do. Okay, tip number 14, are you with me? Hopefully you are, um, is get the laundry package. So the laundry package is unlimited laundry and the price changes, so don't ask me how much it is. It's probably, I wanna say maybe $10 a day. It depends on the ship depends on what time, like whether you're watching this now, when I'm filming this or two years from now, prices change. But in my opinion, it's always a really, really good deal because their laundry service is spectacular. Like they will wash your silk clothes perfectly. Um, they get stains out of clothes and their laundry detergent is like hyperallergenic. So my mom is even allergic to like the Tide free and gentle laundry detergent. Um, and she has to do an extra rinse of her laundry when she does it with just vinegar. She gets so itchy. But the Holland America laundry service never bothers her. They use really good laundry detergent and they're fantastic. So we always get the unlimited laundry package. Benefit is um, my mom's a four star mariner, so it's for free for us. But if you pay extra for it, I think it's definitely, definitely worth it. Plus then you don't have to pack as many clothes and it's kind of nice getting your like underwear neatly folded every day or your swimsuits clean. It's just a great service and I think it's worth it. Okay, tip number 15. We are halfway there. Um, again, if you find this helpful, please subscribe below. Okay, so tip number 15 is related to boarding times. What time should you board the Holland America cruise ship? Now, probably like a day ahead of time on your boarding pass, it will tell you what time you can board the ship. It seems like 12 p.m. is like a really common, popular time. So my recommendation for you cruise newbies is board the ship at noon. Basically, the earlier, the better. I like to arrive early because my mom and I like to like get settled. We like to, um, like if she's gonna, if we're gonna ask for our specialty table at the assigned dining time, we like to take care of that. We like to have lunch up in the Lido buffet. We like to explore the ship. We like to go to the spa and put our name in for the raffle that they have. We just like to board early and I think the lines are shorter earlier on. I will say they usually um, have the rooms ready around 1 p.m. So when you do board early, like bring with you what you need to have that day because you might not be able to get to your room right away and your luggage might not be delivered until like 4 or 5 p.m. But I would recommend board as early as you can. If you are in a, um, what is it, like a Neptune suite or if you're a four star or five star mariner, or if you paid for Orange Club, or is it Club Orange? I always get confused. You can board basically whenever you want. So my mom and I always board usually around like 11.30, sorry. Um, we like to board even earlier, but if you do not have those specialty access things, I suppose, plan on boarding at 12 p.m. Okay, where am I at? Tip number 16 is pack comfortable walking shoes for any cruise that you go on. So um, I hate it when we come back from a day at port and I see women like struggling to walk onto the ship because they packed uncomfortable flip flops to wear all day. Um, depending on where you're going, you might be walking a lot when you are at port. So just pack 
comfortable walking shoes. I always pack a pair of tennis shoes. I pack dressy sandals for dinner, and then I might pack another pair of slip-on shoes of some sort to wear. So just pack comfortable walking shoes, have comfortable shoes that you can walk in for any cruise. You might be exploring a lot. Okay, tip number 17 is if you are going somewhere with an ocean or beach, pack a shirt with you SPF in it and pack polarized sunglasses. So of course you probably know to pack sunscreen. Um, most likely you might need reef friendly sunscreen depending on where you're going. But a lot of people don't think to pack a shirt with SPF. I personally just have a simple Guy Harvey shirt from Amazon. It's super duper soft. It's like SPF 50. Um, I like to wear that as well as a hat. I even have like, don't laugh, but I put on a um, wetsuit, which prevents me from getting burned. And then I can go into the ocean in January and not be cold. But pack a shirt with SPF and pack polarized sunglasses. Just make sure you protect your skin, especially if you're going somewhere hot and sunny. Um, it just makes it easier than having to reapply sunblock every hour. Okay, tip number 18 is the hydro pool on Holland America Cruise Line. So I'll include a link below to um, a tour of the hydro pool, or maybe it's the hydrotherapy pool, but um, it costs extra. So Holland America Cruise Line usually has their main pool. They have the sea view pool, which is like an adult pool, and they do have outdoor hot tubs, but they also have the hydrotherapy pool, which is inside and it's by the gym usually, and it costs extra. It might be like 250 for the week, might be 150. Um, it's been a while since I pay for it. My mom always gets it, but it is amazing. It is like a big, like jacuzzi tub. And then they have a different room, like a relaxation room with these nice ceramic chairs. And then they have, um, oh shoot, why am I not remembering the name? Those rooms that have uh, lots of moisture in the air for your skin. Um, it's great to go to them on a sea day. It's great to go to them after a day at port. My mom goes to the hydrotherapy pool or hydro pool every night. Um, it's amazing. People really do love it. They do sell a limited number of passes to the pool. So I would recommend you get it. Um, I would say skip out on the massages on board the ship. Um, just pay for a pass to the hydro pool. Okay, tip number 19 is regarding travel logistics. Actually, I'm gonna sneak two tips into this one. One is if you are going to the port from a hotel, um, or from the airport, just take Uber or Lyft. I know some people pay for transfers through Holland America Cruise Line that costs more than Uber would most of the time. And then you have to arrive at the right time. You have to wait for other people. It's a pain. Just call Uber or Lyft. That's my first tip. And then my second tip is arrive ahead of time. So if you are boarding the ship and you are flying from somewhere with a layover or flying somewhere in the winter time or even just flying somewhere where your flight will arrive anytime after 11 a.m honestly probably after 10 30 a.m i would strongly consider arriving a day ahead of time um cruises now leave much sooner than they used to. So they used to leave around like 4 or 5 p.m. Now I feel like they leave and they stop boarding at like 3 p.m. It's early. You never know what's going to happen. You never know if there's going to be a glitch in the airline systems and all flights are canceled. You don't know if your layover is going to have something happen. If it snows and your flight is delayed, um, if it takes you a really long time to get Uber from the airport to the cruise terminal. Like one time, my mom and I usually get it right away. One time the first Uber driver got lost, second one got lost. It took us a while to get an Uber to 
get to the airport in Fort Lauderdale for some reason. So just um, plan to arrive a day ahead of time. Now, I live in Atlanta. My mom and I fly out of Fort Lauderdale. We usually don't arrive ahead of time, but we do catch like the 8 a.m direct flight from Delta. And I always look to make sure that like if the 8 a.m. flight is canceled, there's also a 9.30 a.m. flight. There's also like a 10 a.m. flight. You get the hang of it. Like have coverage to make sure you don't miss your cruise ship. Okay, tip number 20 is travel insurance. Should you get it? Where should you get it from? Um, I'm going to do a separate video about this in the future, but big picture is don't get it from Holland America Cruise Line. I have read on the Facebook groups that people, um, it's not the number one recommended place. They don't cover everything and it's very, very expensive. If you have questions about travel insurance, leave a comment below and I'll help you out before I um, get to making that video. But big picture is don't buy it from Holland America Cruise Line. Um, my mom and I personally never buy it, but that is just us. Okay, tip number 21. No need to pack a hair dryer, shampoo, conditioner, body wash, or lotion. So don't overpack. On Holland America Cruise Line, they have a hair dryer in the room. Is it fancy? No. Does it work? Yes. They have a hair dryer and then their shampoo, conditioner, body wash, and body lotion is all by Elemis. It is fantastic. It smells good. It works great. My mom is allergic to everything. Like she has to buy the Dove sensitive um, soap <laughs> and even uh, the Elemis shampoo and conditioner and body wash on the cruise ships do not bother her skin. So no need to pack any of that stuff. Holland America provides it for you. Tip number 22 is like a budgeting tip and it is know that the daily tip per person is $17 per person per day. So um, just be aware that when you are booking the cruise, there's a price that you see and pay, but know that when you get off the ship, even if you don't buy anything on board, they will charge you $17 per person per day. This covers gratuities for your, like, your room attendant, um, the waiters in the dining room, and other staff. So um, just know that that's an expense to plan for. Okay, tip number 23 is a tip for any cruise, which is pack cash. Make sure you bring cash. So you'll probably want to have like one to two dollars per bag to tip the porter that takes your luggage outside of the cruise ship. And then you're going to want to have dollar bills, tens, twenties for any taxi drivers or tours that you might book when you um, go into port. So my mom and I usually takes the taxi to the beach. So you'll want to have cash for that. Sometimes you need cash to get into like the beach. That's what we do a lot. Also, if you ever want to buy stuff, it's frequently cheaper if you pay in cash than via credit card. So if you plan on buying stuff, definitely have cash on you. Um, and plus, I feel like you don't have to worry about people stealing your credit card number if you just pay them in cash. So I would budget, um, I guess it depends on how lavish you wanna be, but maybe 30 to $60 per person per day maybe 30 to 80. Sometimes the um, tours around the islands are like $80 per person. Um, you could easily spend like $35 on a hat or a sundress. So know how much you might wanna spend and what kind of trips you wanna do. If you're mostly doing excursions that you've prepaid for, maybe you need less cash, but just always have cash on you. Okay, tip number 24 for you new people to Holland America Cruise Line is know that their website is not the best. So if you're like, Christina, I'm trying to do X, Y, Z and I can't figure it out on the website. It just won't let me do it. I can't figure it out. You are not alone. The Holland America website is not easy to navigate. Um, I would recommend have your travel agent, whoever that is, 
call Holland America directly and take care of whatever you need taken care of. So if for some reason you need to ask for an assigned dining time, or you're booking your restaurant reservations, or you have a question about the have it all package and adding on a second family member or a third or like any, any sort of questions, just have your travel agent call Holland America Cruise Line and have them take care of it for you. Also know that sometimes they're customer service people. If you ask them a frequently asked question, they might not give you the right answer. So they can take care of things like booking a reservation, but they might give you the wrong answer. Um, one example of this is, I know somebody called Holland America Cruise Line about the have it all package. Cause you have to like, if one person buys it, both people in the room have to buy it. And they're like, well, what about if I have a kid? Like, I don't want them to buy an alcohol package for however much it is a day. And the person at Holland America Cruise Line gave them the wrong information. Um, for this, I would just say, join the Facebook group Holland America Cruise Tips, that is what it is called, Holland America Cruise Tips, and search, um, use the little magnifying glass for your question. Um, other people have probably asked it, and look up the information there if you have like a frequently asked question. So two takeaways, know their website isn't the best. If you need help, have a travel agent call Holland America for you. And then lastly, so I guess three tips, is go to the Holland America Cruise Tips Facebook group. Okay, tip number 25. Oh my gosh, I'm talking for so long, but these are really good tips. Hopefully you're still with me. Um, is don't overpack. So you really don't need much for a cruise, especially if you're paying for unlimited laundry. I usually pack like shorts that I can wear to port or wear to the gym and some basic t-shirts with SPF in them and my long sleeve SPF shirt and like two swimsuits, sunblock, hat, sunglasses, and like two to three sundresses and that's it. Like you don't want to pack too much. I know there's all these videos out there and all of these packing lists and I see the packing lists and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is so much to pack. I definitely don't pack that much for a cruise. Um, no need to pack all of that complicated stuff. You really don't need a lot for a cruise. So don't overpack. Okay, tip number 26 is excursions. So if you want to do an excursion through the cruise ship or even through like TripAdvisor or Viator, which might be a lot cheaper, um, book it ahead of time. So a couple of reasons to do this, especially with the Honda America cruises is that with the Holland America cruise, not cruises, excursions, with the Holland America excursions, the really good ones do sell out. So book it like a month before you get on the cruise to get the best ones. Also, I've noticed they might have um, the really, they might sometimes have like two excursions, both going to the beach and both are like $45 and one includes alcohol and food and the other one doesn't and it makes no sense why they're the same price but anyway book excursions ahead of time um or look at TripAdvisor if it's like um there's always like should i book through the cruise or should i book through like somebody else my tip is if you're going to be going far away from where the cruise port is like a two hour drive on a bus book through the cruise line because you never know what traffic's going to be like or I think it's a Viator, I'd have to look. There's like one travel agency company that they promise to get you back on time for this ship. Um, but for those situations, book through Holland America Cruise Line, book early. If it's like, hey, we wanna go on a catamaran for an hour at the beach, going through TripAdvisor or any local person would be fine. They're gonna get you back on time. You're not gonna be stuck in traffic, um, but just book early. Okay, tip number 27 is pack um, entertaining things to do on board Holland America Cruise Line. So I frequently on sea days get a little bored. Um, there's not a ton of like, I don't care for the lectures that much. I don't really want to go and do an art painting or watch the art of flower arranging. It's just not my jam. That's just me. Um, so I get a little bored on sea day sometimes. So pack a book that you really like, pack some playing cards, 
pack some things to keep you entertained, pack an audio book. Just know that on C days, there might not be a whole lot going on. So pack something to keep you entertained. Holland America does have board games to play with, play. Um, they do have activities going on just for me personally, always pack something else to keep you busy. Okay, tip number 28 is regarding where to stay on a Holland America cruise ship. So I have other videos about this on like the best and the worst staterooms. Big picture is I personally always like deck five or six in the middle. That's just my number one recommendation. If you're overwhelmed with where to stay, that would be my tip. Okay, tip number 29 is pack any medications that you may need, pack extras and carry them on board the ship with you just in case um, your luggage gets lost or who knows what, there's a delay in delivering your luggage. Just pack any medications like with you, with your carry-on that you walk physically on the ship with. And then tip number 30 is of course, always pack a phone charger. But in addition to that, I would pack an extra battery, like one of those portable batteries that you put on your cell phone. So I've noticed that when my mom and I are in port, I feel like my phone goes through data really, really quickly, maybe because it's trying to catch signal in the ports. Um, so pack an extra battery so that your phone stays charged. Um, that way you can also like use the map or just always have your phone charged safety reasons as well, but an extra battery helps with that. Okay, so those were my top 30 tips. Again, if you thought this was helpful, please subscribe below, or if you have a question, leave a comment below. I'll also include um, a PDF to these tips so that you can just print them off and have them handy. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful. I know it was a long one, but I wanted to cram it all in into one um, YouTube video. So stay tuned for more tips and have a great day. Bye guys.